Good morning to you. I hope you uh, enjoyed your Canada Day. Uh, I'm here in the sanctuary and uh, I want to let you know that I've met with some uh, folks uh, this week as uh, plans are starting to be drawn up to uh, return to indoor worship services. We want to take our time and uh, do things right so that uh, there's uh, no way that we're uh, putting folks into jeopardy. Uh, so you can uh, keep praying about uh, the return to uh, worship services indoors. And uh, as well, uh, I want to reassure you that there'll still be uh, still plans for uh, live streaming even when we come uh, back inside and uh, an option for a drive-in as well. So uh, stay tuned about the details as we uh, slowly make our way back to uh, indoor worship services. I'm thinking today about a, a letter that I read in a, a book one time, uh, a book written by Jeremiah Johnson, who's a historian of uh, Christianity, a believer in Jesus Christ. And uh, in his book, he makes reference to the epistle of Matthias uh, that was written to Diogenes. Uh, it was uh, written in about uh, 160 AD. So it's, a, it's an old letter. Uh, it was written uh, shortly after uh, uh, the, the church was established. Here's an excerpt from that letter. Christians are indistinguishable from other men by either by nationality, language, or customs. They do not inhabit separate cities of their own or speak a strange dialect or follow some outlandish way of life. They live in the flesh, but they are not governed by the desires of the flesh. They pass their days upon earth, but they are citizens of heaven. Obedient to the laws, they yet live on a level that transcends the law. Christians love all men, but all men persecute them. Condemned because they are not understood, they are put to death, but raised to life again. They live in poverty, but enrich many. They are totally destitute, but possess an abundance of everything. They suffer dishonor, but that is their glory. They are defamed, but vindicated. A blessing is the punishment of malefactors, but even then they rejoice as though receiving the gift of life. To speak in general terms, we may say that the, the Christian is to the world what the soul is to the body. As the soul is present in every part of the body while remaining distinct from it, so Christians are found in all the cities of the world, but cannot be identified with the world. As the visible body contains the invisible soul, so Christians are seen living in the world, but their religious life remains unseen. That's the epistle from Matthias to Diogenetus. That was written uh, shortly after uh, Christians became active in the world. In fact, uh, approximately 130 years or so after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. During that time as well, uh, the apostle Peter wrote uh, it and described us this way. He said, uh, Christians are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That's from Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. We are his people called uh, to do his work. And we may not uh, stick out uh, as a, an oddity, but our actions and our life uh, lived in front of others will testify to this uh, great truth. That we're his chosen people, that we're his royal priesthood, that we are the holy nation of followers of Jesus Christ, that we're the people who belong to God. Let's uh, keep serving him in the communities where he's placed us. And let's uh, bring honor and uh, glory to, uh, to our Lord. Ron Edmondson uh, talked one time about his experience as a pastor. And he said uh, he's had people come to him say, and say to him, uh, what is it you do when you're not preaching? Or uh, it must be nice to, to only work one day a week. Or the one that uh, really stood out in my mind, uh, I'd like to come see you this afternoon. Uh, since it's not Sunday, I'm uh, assuming that you are free. 
He went on to say, believe it or not, uh, I've heard all of these and uh, I concur with him. I've heard those uh, in various times in various ways. And uh, they uh, present, in, in a sense, uh, simple misunderstandings. Sometimes people are just trying to be funny when they do that. Uh, but it's not always real funny. Not a laugh out loud kind of funny, at least. Uh, because uh, sometimes those jokes uh, grow a little bit stale. So, what is it? What is it that happens between uh, Sunday and Sunday? Well, I like uh, Ron's uh, choice of the, the 16 things. He gave a list. His list included counselor, career coach, business advisor, custodian, arbitrator, social worker, volunteer, coordinator, events manager, chief encouragement officer, fundraiser, recruiter, trainer, scholar, writer, manager, public relations liaison, amongst many other things. And he concluded that uh, no day is the same. I guess that's what makes uh, being a pastor an interesting thing. Well, before I let you go, uh, Bob Levy, uh, in his column, Bob Levy's Washington, would often uh, uh, accumulate a list of the best t-shirts slogans of the summer. One of those uh, lists include uh, two that uh, really stand out to me as my favorites. One was a picture of a dandelion with the slogan uh, printed under, underneath of it, I fought the lawn, but the lawn won. Or uh, one that uh, really sticks out for me. Liberal arts major, will think for money. I hope you're having a great day. God bless you.